right, everybody, welcome back to True Crime Loser. Good morning. How's it going? It's good to be back. I had a brutal head cold all weekend and even yesterday. Even now, I'm all stuffed up, but that's all right. It's good to be back. For the past two days, I've just been fascinated with the Jesse Smollett case. If you haven't been following it, watch it. It is fascinating. This guy, just like a TV star, music star, just a celebrity in America, thought he would fake a hate crime in order to for publicity and to get his name out there. I guess allegedly fake a hate crime. And, uh, I mean, it's just backfiring on him in a way that is unbelievable. So I'll probably do a video about it down the road. But anyway... Let's get back to Steve and McDaniel. All right, so we pick up 25 minutes, 20 seconds into the interrogation. Steven is completely trolled out. He's sitting there motionless, hasn't moved in ages. Most likely thinking about his favorite toilet paper roll or maybe his favorite violent porn movie. The first detective that kind of had the first go at him didn't fare too well. The detective's leaning back in his chair. It looks like the chair's just going to explode into a million pieces. It's like, it keeps leaning back. The detective yawning. It's about midnight right now in the interrogation. So this, I think this first detective's just a little tired. Just a big, tired boy. And uh, Steven kind of gets the better of him. And then, all right, so we pick up 25 minutes, 20 seconds. The detective with the red shirt comes in to attempt his first little session with Steven. And whether he does it subconsciously or not, kind of his strategy when he gets in is he wants to change the timing. He wants to change the... He wants to change the... The atmosphere kind of pull every but pull everything out of the troll vortex of insanity that Steven has brought in everybody into and so red shirt kind of sits down and he's like sup bud and kind of just like all right bro we're buds now all right no more of this talking like a zombie troll you know this yes no timing it's like let's talk what's up bud we talked earlier now let's talk and um, the first strategy that the red shirt detective goes after is he, st I think he tries to make, he kind of tries to establish like a schoolyard, um, like the way that guys talk to each other in the schoolyard and maybe how guys would make fun of each other in the schoolyard to try to, I think to try to get Steven to act normal. Kind of like, Really, bud? You're going to sit there and say, yes, no, I don't know? Come on, bud. Like, there's this attitude of like, all right, it's over. You talked like a troll to my friend, but now I'm in here. I'm not going to deal with this troll talk. But he just starts grilling Stiven about his guns. It's like, you, have, you how many guns you got in the apartment? Have you ever shot the guns? And Steven's just three and... No, I've never shot them. And he's like, you mean you've never shot your guns? And Steven's like, no. He's like, have you ever shot a gun? And Steven's like, no. And he's like, you mean to tell me you owned three guns and you've never shot your guns? And Steven's like, no. And then the guy in the red shirt's just like, why? Why, Steven? And this turns into kind of a funny through line of this whole session of this guy in the red shirt just getting nowhere. Just bottoming out in the vortex of troll insanity. And then the once he gets to the bottom, all he can really go is just go, Wah, Stiven. Wah. It's horrible, Stiven. Wah. It's like, I can just picture him at like the top of a mountain just being like, Wah, Stiven. <laughs> um... So he's grilling about his guns, but this part kind of annoyed me because it really doesn't make sense on any level. Like on an interrogation level, this is the one thing that Steven doesn't have to lie about, right? It's okay. It's legal for him to have those guns and, 
you're allowed to own guns and not shoot them. There's no law that says you have to go out and shoot your guns. Honestly, I'm kind of glad that Stiven didn't shoot his guns that often or ever. You know, it just, I don't see what the strategy of interrogation was to make fun of him for never shooting his guns, you know. Also, too, just as an American, having a cop say, like, why do you own guns? Like, Staven could have just been like, it's none of your business. <laughs> you know, it's for home defense. Um, so, yeah, he grills him about the guns. It goes nowhere. But, like I said, I think it's sort of trying to establish, like, a schoolyard where, like, the guy in the red shirt's like, you've never shot your gun, and then the fat guy the fat detective in the khaki kind of snickers like <laughs> so they get sort of this like kind of to try to remind Stiven of the old schoolyard days where he's getting made fun of so I think the strategy is it's like you've never shot your gun and then the other detective kind of laughs and then maybe that gets Steven to be like want you know he feels like he's getting made fun of so he snaps out of troll mode and he's like well i just wanted him for the zombie apocalypse like if you feel like you're being made fun of there's a natural reaction to defend yourself and i think they're trying to get that schoolyard like kind of bullying him like stive and you've never shot a gun but it goes nowhere um and he's like you got a girlfriend steven's like no big surprise he's like who's your best friend and I think this is big. So Stephen describes his best friend as this guy that moved away a month ago. And so I think I said it in another video, but I think that this was Stephen's only friend. And I think that he moved away. And I think when he moved away, the isolated troll life of Stephen McDaniels just even got way more isolated. So I think he lost his best friend, and then he's just sitting in that creepy apartment of his, collecting toilet paper rolls, going deep into all his weird fantasies, and then probably just kind of snapped from a reality, terrified that he was going to have to start living a real adult life, and then the thought of losing Lauren as well, because she was going to move out the next day, just was too much for him. And he just lived out the fantasy to the point where now no one can have Lauren and their stories are always tied together. That's kind of my theory. All right. And then redshirt detective kind of moves into a strategy of he says how would you describe your relationship with lauren and i think up to this point so far this is the best strategy that the detectives have gone with and it actually works for about a second it almost seems like a real interrogation and then Stiven just drags him right back into the troll vortex so Red Shirt says, how would you describe your relationship? And Stiven says, we're friends. He says, you're friends? And he goes, yes. And here's why that was a really good question by Red Shirt is, you know, describe your relationship. Because Stiven had already gone on the news and said that they were friends and made it seem like they were good friends. And they just weren't, you know? And so he says they're friends, you know, describe your relationship, we're friends. And then Red Shirt goes, well, how many times, like, what have you guys done together? What do you guys... And now... It's really important as this thing goes forward in time for Stiven. It's important to him to to appear to be friends with her, to seem like they liked each other. And so for the first time in this interrogation, he kind of starts talking 
about something that you can confirm is just bullshit. So he sort of pulls out of the troll vortex of insanity just for a second and has a glimpse of like, you can see for a glimpse the guy that was obsessed with this girl and that killed her. So the detective's like, so what have you guys done together? You know, what that to make you seem like your friends? And he's like, well, we watched the news together. And it's like, how many? And he was like, and the red shirt's like, how many times have you been over to her apartment? And he's like, I don't know. And then he goes, is it one time, two times, third, you know? And Stephen goes, maybe twice. And right there, that quote, quote, maybe twice, end quote, is as good as that answer, getting that answer from him is as good as these detectives have done this whole time. Because, and the detective jumps right in with what he should say. He says, Stephen, two times? When I asked you how many times you've been over there and you said, I don't know, that doesn't make sense. Because if I've been somewhere 50 times, I might say, I don't know. But two times, I would remember two times, Stephen. And that's right. If you're friends with somebody, you're probably going to be over at their apartment more than two times. And you would be, you really would. You'd be over there so many times you wouldn't remember. But if you've just been in someone's place one or two times, you would definitely remember. And Stiven understands immediately that he, you can tell, he feels like, oh, I got off my rhythm. And then he quickly gets back on in kind of a hilarious way. So he's going, so he says maybe twice, and the detective goes into the true thing where he's like, Staven, you have troll hair. You, you've only been over there twice. You would remember that. And he said, you would, you would remember that. Does that make sense? And Staven goes, yes. And he goes, so what I'm saying to you makes sense. And Stephen goes, no. <laughs> and then just like that, you're back in the vortex. There was like a glimpse of like getting outside like, hey, this is a real person. And then, you've only been over there twice? If you were over there more than twice, you would remember. Does that make sense? Yes. So what I'm saying to you makes sense? No. And just like that, people, we're back. Um, and then, so yeah, like I said, we're back into the vortex, and he's like, isn't it odd you haven't seen your neighbor in two weeks? And it's like, eh, I don't know. And then they go, and then he tries to go into the strategy of something's weighing on your heart, Stephen. Something's weighing on your heart, which I've never felt like that is a great interrogation strategy. Someone that can kill someone and dismember their body and sit there with troll hair probably doesn't care if you're telling him that something's weighing on his heart bless your heart Stephen. um something's weighing on your heart and Stephen just zombies through that strategy just no just powers right through it and then Red Shirt's starting to get real frustrated. So he go, he you can tell he's sitting there thinking, like, what's a line? What's a question that he can't? What's a question that he can't yeah, ask yes or no to? So then Red Shirt asks him, describe to me how you feel. And Stiven just goes, I don't know what's going on. And then Red shirt turns up the heat a little bit. He goes from sitting across the table that he slides his he slides his chair right up to Steven. And he puts the he puts his arm on Steven's little shoulder. And gets right up in his face. And Steven is still just sitting there with his hands on the table. They haven't moved. A lot of this interrogation I just end up accidentally skipping because I'm looking at Steven's Stiven's hands just being like they haven't moved what 
and he's just sitting there. So now the detective is just right here holding his shoulder and he gets right up in his face and he goes, did you hurt Lauren Steven? And he's showing a picture. Did you hurt that girl? And I like this strategy, you know, get up in his little face. Did you hurt that girl? But, you know, Stiven just zombies right through it. Just bores down and trolls out right through it. And then Red Shirt goes into the old cookie jar technique, which you hear a lot. You hear these investigators or the detectives going with the... Uh, they tell, like, they ramble about some story about the kid and a cookie jar and stealing the cookie and feeling bad about it. And I've never seen it even close to do anything. But, I mean, they're just trying stuff. So, cookie jar. Also, too, up to this point, there's no evidence being talked about, which makes me believe that they don't really have any evidence. Why are you rambling about some cookie jar if he has her underwear in his apartment or you know, an extra key or a key to her apartment. Like, people dog on these detectives for being horrible interrogators. I think they're fine. I just don't think they had anything to work at. It's midnight. I don't think the search team has found any real evidence for them. And so they're sitting there stuck being like, Stiven, there's a cookie jar, right? And it's midnight and Steven's just in troll mode. His endurance looks like he could go another two days just going, yes, no, I'm a troll. Um, he, and they're sitting there just talking about a cookie jar. And, you know, Steven saying, I didn't do anything. And uh, a strategy that Red Shirt goes with is... I call it the Simon Says strategy. That's where you ask a, a couple questions in a normal timing that they don't have to lie with. And then right on the end, you sneak in an important question. So he's like, Stiven, did you, did you take that cookie? Stiven, you feel bad. It's weighing on your heart. You stole that cookie. And Stephen's like, I didn't do anything. And then he just slips in really quick. But you saw Lauren last night, though. You know, same thing with Simon Says. It's like Simon Says, touch your head. Simon Says, touch your shoulders, touch your knees. You know, you just sort of sneak it in there with the same timing. Trying to get Staven to say, yeah, I did see her last night instead of the two weeks ago that he keeps saying. And then my probably moves into my favorite part of the interrogation when they start talking. To, he starts going, you smell. Red shirt starts saying, you smell like you've been cleaning up, Staven. My wife smells like that when she's cleaning up. You've been cleaning up, Steven. And Steven goes, no. And uh, Red Shirt goes, when, when was the last time you cleaned your apartment, Steven? And Steven goes, I don't know. And the Red Shirt goes, was it this week? And Steven goes, no. And Red Shirt goes, you go a whole week without cleaning? And Steven goes, yes. And the detective just goes, why? That's horrible, Steven. <laughs> That's horrible. And, uh, yeah, but just tell, that just shows you the, how far they're into the vortex of insanity is the detective is just telling him that it's horrible he didn't clean for a week. They're not talking about the evidence or the murder or anything. He's just saying, you don't clean? That's horrible, Steven. Uh, and I don't know what they talked about. I was just staring at Steven's troll hands for a little bit. Um, and then he kind of goes with the strategy of like, did you ever watch her come into her apartment? And Steven's like, no. And he's like, I thought you were friends. If you were friends, you would notice her coming in. And Steven just trolls right through that strategy. Just puts it in four-wheel troll and just right through it. Um, all right, now we're at 38 minutes into the interrogation. And the red shirt's, red shirt's head is on the, on the desk. He's sitting there. 
completely beaten. Stiven is just sitting there looking fine, looking fresh. And uh, 39 minutes, the guy and big guy in all khakis comes back in. And he goes, kind of goes for the ego, like, like, what would you do if you were in charge of this case, Stiven? Could you solve this case, or, or are you too stupid to solve the case? They know, they know Stiven's pretty smart, pretty cocky, so they try to go the ego thing. It goes nowhere, surprisingly. Um, I don't know, I just wrote a couple quotes during this part that cracked me up. One of them is the detective says, quote, so you're calling your grandfather a liar? <laughs> That's just referring to Stiven saying he doesn't have an extra car. They're saying your grandpa says you have an extra car. Um, a quote that Red Shirt had that was funny is, you're, you're saying you're a virgin and jack off to porn on the internet, but you won't admit that you have another car. Okay, now we're at 44 minutes, just a short five minutes later, guy in, in khaki leaves again. He just gets vortexed out of the room. And then Red Shirts tries to, I think, get Staven to admit that he has thought about having sex with Lauren. So he's he goes into this weird thing like, Staven, have you ever looked at a girl and thought, damn, she looks good? And Staven's like... Yes. And he's like, have you ever thought about that with Lauren? And Stephen's like, no. And he's like, you mean to tell me you've never thought about having sex with Lauren? And Stephen's like, yes. And he's like, you have. And Stephen goes, no. And then Red Shirt just slams his head back on the table. <laughs> um. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And then Red Shirt's like, what do you know about that body we found today? And obviously Steven doesn't know. And then he goes into a, a strategy that I think is a decent one. I think he, he should have just gone full in instead of kind of tiptoe around it but he was like what if I told you that I what if I told you that I believe what if I told you I could prove that you moved that body and instead of just being like Staven we can prove it the hair is there he's like what if I told you I can prove that you were connected to the body and Steven's just like I don't know but it does look like Steven's hair maybe on the back, you know, it looks like he's a little freaked out about it. Maybe the hair on the back of his neck stood up a little bit. Maybe his troll hair moved a little bit. I don't know. Because then he was like, red shirts, like, well, if, if, I, if you didn't do it, you would just be like, nope, there's no way you have evidence leaking me to the body. But all you say is, I don't know. And then apparently Stiven, when they asked him if they could search his apartment just the first time right before he did the TV interview, Stiven said that he was nervous they were going to find blood in his apartment. And before that, they hadn't even really noticed that there was a ton of cleaned up blood in Lauren's bathtub. And so... They're like, Stiven, why were you worried about blood? You were the first person to know blood. You know, Stiven just is like, I don't know. Nothing really happens from it. And Red Shirt now is just getting pissed. He's starting to lose his cool a little bit. And he's just going, Stiven, there's blood in your apartment, Stiven. Why, Stiven? There's blood, Stiven. And he's got his arm on his shoulder. And he, the good line is like, he, you scrubbed and you wiped, but you didn't get all of it, Staven. Don't you watch CSI? Staven, there's blood in your apartment, Staven. And Staven just trolls right through it. Just sits there and nothing happens. 
And right there, we're at 51 minutes. And I think there's probably just like one more session left and then they just leave him. They all, everybody leaves the room and they leave him in the room again. And he's just sitting like this. And he still doesn't move. You know, it's like when the detectives leave, he doesn't go like this or like this or put his head down. He does not move. And I don't really even know what to say about that. But we're slogging. Thinking about any final thoughts on this, this section. I don't know. I think, the, I think that the closest that Stiven was to losing the exchange is when he was talking about how they were friends and then said they've only hung out two times. That's the closest that the whole Stiven vortex came to ending. And then he got right back into it by just saying, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, you do. No? All right. Well, we're back. But that's going to end it for this one. I love you all. Thanks to everyone that's participating and subscribing. We'll see you next time. True Crime Loser out.